Uh, good morning. Good to see everyone. It's uh, really good for us to to get out of the dungeon, take a break from the meetings. Uh, you know, it's an exciting time of year. You know, for a number of reasons. It's uh, first and foremost, it's really good to have the players back in the building. Uh, we have mini camp Monday, and then uh, obviously, you know, the draft next week. And so we're excited. There's a lot of juice. Everyone talks about the juice and energy in the building, but there is. There's a lot going on, and and so we're fired up. Uh, really enjoyed the draft process. Um, it's been a great collaboration between Coach Hackett, you know, the coaches, the scouts, and, and really the entire organization. You know, it's been an all hands on deck approach uh, with everyone uh, involved. I especially want to thank uh, Nathaniel and his staff for all the work they put into the draft. I mean, new staff, most of the coaches are new, and uh, we have them grinding on the draft. and interviews and Zooms and you name it. And so they've been here late at night, early morning. So can't thank uh, them enough. Uh, really can't thank the uh, College Scouts enough, uh, uh, led by Brian Stark. And these guys are, are really the, uh, this is their Super Bowl. Um, they're the stars of the show. They don't get enough credit. I say that, I can't say that enough. Uh, they've been out all fall, you know, visiting schools. Um, and then once the season's over, you know, they're out in the Pro Day circuit, the All-Star Game circuit. They've been here for three weeks, and so uh, this is really the best staff I've been around, and that says a lot. I've been around a lot of good staffs, but I'm so impressed with the whole group. Can't name them all. Uh, I want to talk about the, the, the pro scouting department, um, everything they do. And, and the pro scouts are really the nuts and bolts of what we do in the player personnel. Uh, they're in charge of the day-to-day -day during the season, all the transactions we do. You guys know how many transactions you know we do. We bring guys in consistently. They're on it. They watch tape. They have a great pulse of the league, led by A.J. Durso. You got Jordan Dizon, Patrick Walsh, uh, Robbie Payton. Um, they set the plan for free agency. They're involved in all the trades, and now they're helping out with uh, the draft. Um, just a couple other people I want to mention. I can't uh, you know name everyone in the building, although everyone's had great. Uh, uh, importance to what we're what we're doing. Um, Vince Garcia, our head athletic trainer, our team doctors, our medical staff. I mean, they review probably 500 medical records for these draft eligible players. Uh, they're still working on it. They have a day job. They have our own team to focus on. They're here late at night, you know, just reviewing uh, these medical files. So important to what we do. Obviously, we don't. You know, we want to know what we're getting. You know, we don't, there's some damaged goods, which is fine, but we really want to know what we're going, we're getting. There's no surprises because Vince is so diligent in, in what he does. Uh, Keith Bishop, uh, head of security, um, he does background checks in all the draft eligibles. He does background checks and anyone who enters our building, you know, you never know he's a great player because he's so humble. He's here seven days a week and he grinds and, and, uh, you know, I appreciate him, you know, just more than anyone in the building. Uh, Ray Jackson, Vice President of Player Development. And Ray uh, was involved in a lot of our interviews at the Combine, a lot of our top 30 uh, interviews. And, and Ray brings a, a really unique perspective in that he was a player. And uh, he can really relate to these players you know, in a way I can't, in a way that probably Mooj can't. And so, you know, Ray is really uh, vital to me. He's vital to Coach Hackett. He's really a glue guy, you know, within our building. So can't uh, thank Ray enough. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Chip Conway. I think I talk about Chip every press conference. That shows you how important he is. But if you've seen our building, uh, the reboot that our building has undergone, it's it's remarkable. And maybe uh, you know Smythe will let you take a tour. But it's it's really unbelievable to what he's done in in just a short time. Um, and then Joe Ellis, you know, uh, we've done a lot, you know, this off season, you know, starting with the coaching search uh, and then, you know, free agency. And then we had a trade and we spent a lot of money on our building. And, and uh, since I've arrived, Joe's given us everything we need to win. And uh, so I can't thank him enough. And, and just for his support, uh, Joe is a great sounding board for me being a first time GM. And so I, I can't thank Joe enough. And then finally, just John, John Elway. Um, John sits in our meetings. He doesn't say much. He listens. Uh, John's got a great football mind, as you all know, and, and he's been really important to me through this. This has been a kind of a tough off season, a lot, a lot of change and, and some of the big decisions, but John's been really important uh, to me. 
Um, just talking about the draft, I uh, feel really good about where we're at. I feel a, a good about our prep. Um, the hay's not quite in the barn. We're getting close. We still, we still have some clusters uh, to sort through, you know, throughout our board. Um, but we're, we're getting through that this weekend. We'll start having some mock drafts, you know, early next week. Then we'll make our calls and we'll get a pulse for the league. And then obviously, you know, showtime. And we're really looking forward uh, to the draft. Um, you know, contrary to popular belief, we do have nine picks. Um, Mike, Cliss, and uh, five, five in the first four rounds. So um, I think we're in a really good spot. I think there's going to be value in those rounds where we can upgrade our team, uh, upgrade our depth, upgrade our speed, everything we need to do. Uh, we're fortunate that we made, uh, you know, we made, you know, free agency, we filled a lot of needs and throughout the off season. So we don't need to reach for players. Um, you know, we, we're going to have flexibility. Again, I talk about flexibility all the time, but we can take the best player, you know, and we can move up, we can move down. So I really think uh, we're in a good spot heading into the draft. Um, and then finally, you know, uh, Darren Muji's up here with us. I think you all know Darren. Uh, he's our assistant GM. And, and uh, I, I didn't know Darren uh, when I took the job, uh, but he quickly impressed. He shined. Uh, his attention to detail, you know, his work ethic, his knowledge of the league, his knowledge of the pro, the college. He's got a great pulse of what's going on out there. Uh, but the best thing he does, he's a great manager of people. He's got a great demeanor throughout the building. You know, just dealing with the coaches, the players, agents out there. Um, you know, this offseason, you know, I was pulled in a lot of different directions, you know, with the coaching search and the trade and just a lot of stuff that comes up. And, uh, Darren picked up the slack and we didn't miss a beat. So he's really vital to our organization. Uh, we're lucky to have him. You know, he's had a number of teams come after him the past year and, and he stayed. And so I can't thank Darren enough for that. I think he's a rising star in the NFL. And again, we're lucky to have him. And with that, I'll open up to questions for both myself and uh, Darren. Let's start with Ryan. Hey, George. Uh, you got nine picks next week, but only four, I believe, in 2023. How big of a priority is it to add some things that make sure it's covered? Yeah, that, that, you know, we'll look into that, you know, if it makes sense. Uh, obviously, you know, we do love picks much to, uh, unlike the Rams, we like picks a lot. Um, Les is a good friend, but uh, no, we would, if, we, if that comes up, we would, you know, we don't want to force it, but yeah, we'd definitely like to add more picks next year. Hey, George, now that you have a premier passer, do you bring Russ into the conversation at all as you map out your draft strategy? Does he have any sort of voice um, like, like some teams give to them? Yeah, you know, I talk, to Russ, I talk to Russ daily and, uh, you know, kind of tell him maybe our plan and what we're looking for and, and our needs. And, and uh, Russ is, he's a football junkie and he'll want to know maybe what players we're looking at and I'll tell him and he'll watch him and give me his opinion. and. You know, he's a great resource, and, uh, you know, it's, it's just good having him around. George, over here. Um, uh, will you try to move up into the first round, or is that going to be too difficult of a task sitting at 64? And, and then, Darren, George said that the energy and culture has changed in the building. What, what have you noticed with that? Yes, yeah, so it's going to be tough, you know, just, you know, to move up in the first, I wouldn't rule it out. I would say I more, much more likely we move up in the second or move back. You know, it's going to be, it's going to take a lot of capital. We, we've gone through all the models to get up there in the first. And so, you know, it never ruled out, but I think it's more likely we move up in the second. Yeah. George alluded to the energy and uh, you definitely feel, I feel it myself. I think everyone in the building feel it, feels it. You guys have got a chance to meet coach Hackett. You can't, you can't deny the guy brings a positive energy. He brings a lot of good juice. His staff, he's got a young staff they bring as well. And then with the addition of Russell Wilson, obviously bringing kind of a new energy, Randy Gregory, DJ Moore, some of the free agents we've added. I think just the addition, some of the new things have, have definitely brought a, a positive energy and just a new energy to the building. George, when you look at just this draft as a whole, what do you think is the strength position-wise? And then specifically, what do you like about this edge class? Yeah, I think the edge class is really strong. You know, you, it's, it's, uh, everyone needs pass rushers, and I think there's a number of pass rushers in this draft. So I would say that would be the strength. I mean, there's other positions, uh, you know, that are strong, but I think edge is probably the number one uh, strength. Um, 
you know, I think if you're, you know, you're picking in the first, high second, you can get a good tackle. Uh, I think there's some good offensive linemen. Um, receivers has been strong, and I think this is a strong receiver class. And, and uh, so that's, that's probably about it. Uh, for both of you, first for Darren, George mentioned that he had opportunities to leave. Uh, were some of those opportunities chances to move up? And if so, why did you stay in Denver? Yeah, there's been a few opportunities I've had throughout my career to maybe move to different organizations, but I've just never felt the need to leave. It, it's such a special place to work here with this organization, the Denver Broncos, obviously with Joe Ellis, John Owe, and now George Payton. We've got such a good thing going here. I work with such a good group of people that I've never really wanted to leave. I've had opportunities, but I'm really happy with the situation I'm in now and the group we have and the team we've put together and feel strong about that. And George, kind of looking at the trade market, do you sense that there's uh, a willingness from teams above and behind you to it's on day two to, to move up and make deals the way you often like to make deals? You don't get that sense now because we're out of the mix. You know, most of the calls are, are in the first round. Now we're making calls and telling teams what we'd like to do. And then, you know, when we get to that second day, we'll be on the phone calling every team and we'll have an idea of what we want to do that second day, especially as it, 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 it starts dropping, you know, to the mid rounds. And, and uh, then we'll decide whether we want to move up. Uh, do we want to stand pat or, you know, do we want to move back? And that kind of depends who's there, how many players we like are there. You know, let's say you, there's 10 picks from when you're picking, you still have four players, you'll probably get one more likely to stay. Um, but we'll always have the flexibility to move back. So it's hard to determine we're picking at 64, you know. But I think you can always uh, move back if you want. This is for both of you. Uh, now that you have your quarterback, and yes, you had to give up a first-round pick this year to get the guy that you wanted in Russell Wilson, uh, but how much of a relief is it that you don't have to do a deep dive this year on first-round quarterbacks and you don't have to talk about Kenny Pickett's hand size? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. I don't have talked about the quarterbacks. Seems like every time I'm up here, I have to answer questions about a quarterback. But, uh, you know, if it's not the quarterback, it's another position. It's the edge. It's the corners. Who's going to be there? So it's always – we enjoy that. You know, that's not uh, – we, we enjoy breaking down the quarterbacks. We still did with this class, even though we're not going to take one high. It's just what we do, you know, at every position. And, and now the fun – I mean, this is the best time of year other than the season – because we're in a room, we're locked down, we're with the coaches, we're talking football, no distractions, very little distractions. It's all ball. Um, players are here, like I mentioned. This is the best time of year other than the season, and we really enjoy it. Yeah, and, and I echo what George said. And, you know, prior to uh, having Russell join the team, we were evaluating all those quarterbacks. We got out on the road. We got to see Kenny Pickett, Malik Willis, and a lot of these guys, Sam Howell, live. So we started that process early in the season. And like George said, we still evaluated these guys, even these draft meetings, because it's just part of the process. You, you never know what's going to happen in the draft. And it's just good reference just for really professional development, to have those discussions with the entire group. And we're always making reference and kind of comparisons to previous draft classes. So it just helps us in the future moving forward that we stay true to the process and, can, and just kind of stick to the process and still talk about those quarterbacks, even though we may not take them. And you early. don't know what's going to happen in three years, four years, mm -hmm. five years. Maybe one of those guys is available. You, you, you just never know. And you want to have the, the right evaluation, all the background, everything about them, you know. Kenny's hand size gets bigger. It might, might, they might grow. Who knows, you know. Yeah, for both of you guys, uh, the cliche, no pain, no gain. Uh, Russell Wilson was the gain. How painful is it, has this process been for you that you don't have the number nine and number 40? It's a blessing, Mike. I mean, we love, you know, we love having first round picks. We love having the early second, but we also love having a franchise quarterback that sets the tone every day in the building. Um, I come in here, he's here working. There's a reason he's great. It's because the work he puts into it and all the players, the entire organization are watching. And so there's no pain in that. And that first day we'll watch Russell Wilson highlights. Yeah, I echo everything uh, George said. I think everyone's really excited about Russell being here, a part of this team, a part of this organization. And we're still really excited about the draft. We don't have that first and second round pick, but we still got nine, you know, and we got those two thirds, those two fourths, that late second. So we're still excited and just as enthusiastic about the draft as we've ever been and just kind of really focusing on those, that first pick at 64. George, um, right here. Whether it's uh, in the draft or for a quarterback, you've shown some affinity for trades. Um, 
What's the juice of a trade for you, and what's the value <coughs> deal of a trade? Yeah, it, it's uh, we. Uh, I think it's really important to have flexibility in a draft, and the ability to move. I've said this before. Uh, the ability to move up. There's a rush in getting that player, Javante Williams. When that trade was done, the the you know the room went crazy. There's also juice moving back, knowing there's going to be a play. You know, there's enough players. If you move back, you can still get one, but get more picks to build your football team. So it's always fun getting on the phone with uh, other GMs and having fun with it and and making trades. I just think um, it's fun to work the draft and uh, to try to, to build your football team the best you can. And, and we're not making trades just to make trades. We're making trades to to build this thing the best that we can do it. Yeah, and I can comment on that too. Just watching it firsthand last year in the draft, seeing George operate, um, he's really good at maneuvering the draft, and he has a lot of good contacts in the league. So we're fielding all the calls throughout the draft, and then even throughout the whole season with George's contacts throughout the league. He he wants to be in on every possibility. We'll leave no stone unturned. So we take trade talks. I mean, all training camp, all season, and with George's contacts and just his flexibility and open mindedness, it's it's been fun to watch. It's just hard to stand pat and hope. You know, it's. I just think you need to push it. You need to push it every now and then, and that's kind of uh, our philosophy. That's for for the mm-hmm. new coaching staff, how important is it for you and the scouts to sort of figure out what they want? Oh, it's it's very important, and it's been a it's been a great process. You know, once Coach Hackett really finalized the staff, we got together as a group with the scouts and went through went through what they're really looking for at each position, scheme wise, what's going to fit. And that's been an ongoing process, and that dialogue's been great this past month, having the coaches in the draft meetings talking about players. Okay, this is why this guy fits what we do. This is what we're really looking for in the offensive linemen. It's been very collaborative, and it's a great group of guys we're working with, both scouts and coaches. And it's been a fun process, but it's definitely a very important um, piece of it. And we did that early once the staff was established. Jordan, do you see corners in day two, day three come in and contribute? Yeah, I do. I think uh, you never know who's going to be there. Um, but I do think uh, there's corners in the first two days that can certainly help us. I do. Uh, George, how much of the process changes now without some of those first round guys in play? And then, uh, Darren, for you, what is it like in those meetings, those pre draft meetings? Kind of what stands out about the process to you? Yeah, uh, Eric, the process hasn't changed a bit. You know, we're just focused a little later. You know, we're not focused on the ninth, you know, because you're always focused on that first pick. You want to hit on that first pick. But, uh, you know, now we're just focused really on the second round and the third. And and uh, those are really the ones you can you can kind of tell who, who may be there, the 10 players that could potentially be there. And, and we spend a lot of time in that area. And uh, we stack them. And that's what we've been doing the last three days, just sitting in the room and, and going over scenarios and, you know, the one three O's to one three threes, there's 20 players there. Let's stack them and why, you know, and, and, and that's the fun part of it. That college scouts been working all fall for this time. And so they all get a say in it. We all get a say in it. Analytics has a big say. And, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're just very collaborative in there. Um, you know, interns get a say, we, I don't, I want to hear everyone's opinion, you know, and, and then we'll listen and, and, uh, you know, then we'll stack the board accordingly. Yeah, and just to echo everything George said, I mean, it is. It is a very collaborative process and effort to get to the right decision. And like George hit, I mean, he, he wants everyone's opinion because they all matter. And that's interns. And, you know, at this point in the process, too, we really bring in the medical guys. And we've got a lot of medical pieces that are very important. So that's an important part in, in this, you know, collaboration at this point, taking in the med- medical concerns and considering that and where these guys rank on the draft board. George, what's been your impression of, of how KJ Hamler has come along in his recovery from, from his knee injury? Um, and when you look at his, his skill set as a, as a take the top off guy, how, how key of a piece do you think he could be for Russell Wilson once he gets healthy? And could that be by the start of the season? Yeah, I mean, I couldn't be impressed with anyone else in our building than KJ Hamler. I mean, significant injury, um, you know, and just the, you know, no one fights, no one works, no one has more passion. And the fact that I saw him running routes last month at uh, Russell's, I mean, I was, I was, you know, because I kind of lost, I know he's doing well. I know the, the surgery went great, but then I saw him running routes and you see him today, he's out there. Uh, very impressive. And a player like KJ, um, you know, Russell can, throws a, one of the better deep balls in the NFL. So have a guy that can stretch the field uh, like KJ, 
uh, like Cortland, like Judy, you know, I think uh, it's only going to benefit our team and Russ. Um, what was the second? Was that for him? Uh, do you have a timeline for his, his return? To the you know, I don't. I hate to put a timeline on it. Uh, so many things can happen, but he's he's well ahead of schedule, and uh, we're looking forward to getting him back on the foot. You know, on the uh, during the season. George, um, obviously, you have to project not only uh, your draft picks' future, but who they may be replacing. So when it comes to edge, I'm curious on projections. As important as that position is, where you stand on the projection of the guys coming out and Bradley Chubb. Yeah, I think it's separate. I mean, Bradley, uh, I hope Bradley's here a long time. I know he's going in the last year of his deal. Uh, I've told you how much I appreciate Bradley, how he's come back from the injuries. This is the first off season he hasn't had a to rehab. He's out there working. Uh, really high on him as a person, the passion, uh, the grit, uh, the physicalness. You just can't have enough pass rushers. You know, if we take a pass rusher, it has nothing to do with Bradley. We can't have enough. Randy Gregory, Malik Reed. Uh, Jonathan Cooper, that's how you win when you get a wave. You get a wave of rushers, and, uh, and you have an offense that can score points. You get leads, and then you throw this pass rush at them. Uh, you look at the Rams. You look at the teams that have had success over the years, uh, Indianapolis with Peyton or the, the Denver with Peyton. You, know, just, you get the lead, you have the pass rushers, you let them go. And I think that's a, that's a formula, and you just can't have enough of those players, whether it's inside rushers or edge. You know? so, so you see a deal getting done with Bradley Dunn? Uh, you know, we're, we've got a lot going on. We're, we're focused on the draft. We're focused on the off season, and we'll just kind of see how that plays out. I got a question for each of you. So, Darren, it's cool that it's collaborative, but is there added pressure or more weight that you're in a different role now in the last couple of years when you're in that room? And, and then do you ask George what he wants from kind of your role having been in it as long as he was? Yeah, you know, in terms of the added pressure, I don't feel any added pressure. I felt like my voice has always been valued, just like I think George and I both value everyone's opinion in the organization on these players, whether it's an intern, whether it's a <coughs> scout, whether it's Brian Stark, our college director. Everyone's opinion is heard and matters. Um, and in regards to George, yeah, George and I have great dialogue daily. And I'm always asking, hey, is there anything I can do here to help or there to help? And George is a great communicator, so it's, it's been pretty seamless on, on my end. And I think it's, it's a great relationship and partnership. And then kind of back the other way, because you were in that role for so long, are there specific blind spots that maybe you helped Rick with or that you think you have? That he, have yeah, no doubt. I mean, because this is uh, – I get pulled in a lot of different directions. And uh, I can say, Darren, you got this. You know, you, can you talk to the pro – get a Zoom on with the college scouts? And, you know, that, the, the coaching search, I mean, I, I didn't have a lot to do with what was going on. I mean, I was consumed. And uh, – uh, to be able to have someone like Mooj who could meet with the, the pro guys, the college guys, uh, sign the futures, uh, you name it, um, that's huge. And I, you know, I used to do that for Rick as well, so I see a similar role. And Brandon, you hit it. He, uh, George was in this seat that I'm in now for almost 14 years, so he's got a wealth of knowledge and experience, and he's always sharing that. And I feel fortunate to have that because he has a lot of experience and he's always telling me you know, things that they lived through. So it, it's been really good. Yeah, George, the, we always hear this time of year, there's a lot of smoke screens, misdirection, that sort of thing, whether it's medicals or agents or, or other teams. How do you filter out what's true and what's not, and how much really is there of that? Oh, I'm sure there's plenty. You know, in regards to the medicals, we just trust our team. You know, I think we have one of the best trainers and Vince Garcia. I really trust our team doctors. And... Uh, a lot of smoke screens on where guys are going and trades and stuff. We're kind of out of that mix because we're at 64. No one's really um, worried about who we're picking, you know. But uh, we listen to it all. I think it's valuable. You know, uh, all the data we can get uh, is great, and, and we have people tracking it. Uh, needs for other teams, visits for other teams. Visits are important. You know, we, if we're trying to determine if that player is going to be there, he's five picks ahead of us, we can look to see if he's visited any of those teams. Now, it doesn't mean they're going to take him, but we use everything to our disposal to try to make the best decision. Yeah, two-parter, first one for George, follow-up for Darren. Uh, George, uh, this class has uh, been a kind of a double COVID, coming off two COVID seasons. I was wondering how that impacted evaluation with you might have a lot of players that are had two red shirts and are older and then versus some others that are true juniors. 
say coming out? How that yeah, Mike, a really good question. We were just commenting on that. You know, when we started these meetings, there's more 25 year old players or 23, 24. It's an older class. Um, it really doesn't change. If they're a good player, uh, obviously you like them younger, but you're still going to take the guy. Um, really hasn't I mean, it was a, hasn't changed our evaluation process. More guys to evaluate probably. I think it'll be a deeper um, later round class than it was last year. Free agent class will be a lot deeper. Last year's free agent class, you know, I mean, we were done in about five minutes. I think it was over here. It just wasn't as deep. So I expect there to be a deeper class in the later rounds and free agency, college yeah. free agency. And Mike, to comment on that too. We did kind of anticipate that after last year's class being smaller, knowing that there was going to almost be like a double class this year, we had talks after the draft last year, myself, George Stark, our entire staff, okay, how, how should we address this? And we, you know, we brought on some guys. We, we had Roman Pfeiffer in early in the season to do some preseason stuff with us. And then we sent him out exclusively on the road all fall just as an extra set of eyes because the class was bigger this year. There is more draft prospects in this. And, and we feel really good about that plan. We had some in-house guys get out too. So we had a lot of eyes out there. We wrote a lot of players this fall. I mean, I was looking the other day, we had nine reports on one player. So we feel good about our plan and we feel good where we're at today. And then, Darren, you uh, you worked with both John Elway and George. I was just uh, your thoughts on the, how they handled the draft, John, and you know versus George, I guess. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to get into comparing John and George and the process and the differences because really, there's more similarities than there is differences. I just feel very fortunate to have worked with both. You know, John gave me an opportunity in this league. He hired me, and then George obviously promoted me this past year and has given me a great opportunity to l learn under him. But I've learned so much from both. I just feel fortunate to have been around both and continue to be around both. George said it earlier. John is here now. He's in the draft meetings. I still have great conversation with John in between meetings, bounce ideas off. So He has, um, a, he has a better arm than I do. <laughs> Look, that's true. I was that more of a running true. quarterback. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I don't know about that now. But. <laughs> hey, Darren, got two for you. Uh, being a part of this coaching search and one of the few people involved in the Wilson loop during those trade talks, how valuable were those two experiences for you? Oh, invaluable experience for myself. You know, and I, I'm, again, really fortunate that George and Joe got together when we were going through the coaching search and decided to kind of put together a little coaching search committee per se, and Joe giving us the resources to get out and reach all these coaches. You know, it was myself, Ray Jackson, Kelly Klein, Rich Hurtado, Patrick Smythe, you know, George did that with intent. You know, a lot of different perspectives, a different viewpoint on a head coach, but just to sit in on those interviews and kind of conduct those with George and that group was invaluable and a great experience. I think we're all happy with the outcome um, that we got with it. And then in regards to the Russell, same deal, invaluable experience. You know, just being behind closed doors with George and Rich Hurtado, talking about compensation packages and going through the process that we did with Russell and uh, Seattle was was awesome, great experience, and, and again, I think we're all happy with the way that turned out. And second question, when you're evaluating running backs, some of them don't have to pass protect, some of them don't have to catch the ball out of the backfield. How difficult is that to project how they would fit into Nate's system? It, it's not that difficult. Again, we talked about this earlier. We have great dialogue with, with the coaching staff, Nate, Tyrone, the, the running back coach, and just kind of what we need at the position and what we value in the position. And then we go through and talk about all those traits that each back has, you know, because they all, they all are different. But obviously everyone wants that complete back that can do it all, but there's just not a lot of them. So it's kind of how you piece it together and then how you stack them, you know, who's the best runner. And, 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 and Ryan, not many of these college backs are – you know, are, are very good at pass protection. You know, it's something that can be taught. Um, you know, Javante was was pretty good at it. You know, he but he he wasn't a, a finished product. And, and when he got here, you know, just with coaching and you know, give credit to Curtis Mockins and 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 the staff, previous staff. And you know, he's one of the better pass protectors in the league. So it is something that can be taught if you have the will and uh, you have the mind. Got two quick ones for you. And just in terms of logistics. Are you guys doing mocks, and, and how deep will those mocks go? I mean, do you mock all the way to 64? And, and oh, yeah. We haven't really started the mock process. I, I sit, you know, probably get into it Monday, and we have a uh, an automated mock. Uh, our analytics guys are pretty good, and they've developed a, you know, that you can just keep running them. And I think, you know, ESPN probably has them too, but uh, – you just keep running them. Then our scouts will kind of come up with a mock. And so we'll, we'll mock for a day and just determine. You just want all these scenarios taking, all these discussions taken care of before the draft. So, so during. You sit around in a room and you 
take this guy. In. No, we have a big screen, and you push a button, and it's up, 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 and you find, you know, 64 will have a different player every time, um, a realistic. Um, I don't know how they come up with it, but uh, we used it last year. It's pretty, you know, with ninth pick, it's pretty easy. We'll see about 64. Uh, but we do it, and, and the reason you do it is because you don't want any surprises on draft day. All the discussions are done. It's quiet. You know, it's pretty quiet other than trades. And they just kind of fall off the board, and you take the guy who's there for the most part. Uh, and uh, are you looking at the USFL at all? Um, and, and if you are, how, how are you using that as an evaluation tool? Yeah, we, we'll, you know, we'll have a pulse of the USFL. Uh, we'll have our pro guys. That's another thing they'll be you know, evaluating. And, and uh, definitely we'll look at that. I'm sure there will be a player or two to come out of there. And, and uh, just like all the other leagues, you know, we'll, we'll evaluate that league. This one's for both of you. Uh, what skills are you looking for in a modern inside linebacker? The reason I ask is I was at Laramie for Chad Moon's pro day. I talked to Logan Wilson. He said, that guy's a faster version of me. I think it's a pretty good comparison, and I think he's a modern linebacker. But what are you, what traits specifically are you looking for now that tight ends are more of a weapon in the passing game? What do yeah. all of these need in both your eyes? Yeah, I mean, first and foremost, the instincts. It's a very instinctual position, ability to key and diagnose, and uh, and then the physical traits come in. You know, you'd, you obviously you'd like them bigger, you'd like them longer. Um, but speed, athletic ability, this is a pass. This is a space league now. You want guys to be able to run, play in space, be able to cover. Uh, you look at our division, you know, you need your linebackers to really cover. Um, obviously, you like them to blitz. It, it's a, you have to do so many things at that position. Uh, the number one trait to me, though, is, is instincts. Uh, you look at a guy like Josie Jewell, may not be the biggest, may not be the fastest. He plays faster than others. He, he sees it faster. He anticipates. He's so instinctive. So it just depends. There's all different shapes and sizes. Bottom line, we want good football players. Um, but if they can if they can play in space and cover, that that's a, a big bonus. Yeah, George hit it. I mean, we have these discussions a lot. So I think we, we put a premium on instincts at that position. And then in today's league, it, like George said, it's a space and cover league. So athleticism and speed and instincts, very important to me. And I think we all feel the same way at that position. It, the, the game's changed, you know, in, in – uh, the 80s or maybe even when I came in the league, the two down plugger, you know, that, that was in vogue. And uh, there's, those guys still can play, but everyone's looking for the guy that can, that can cover and run. I got a couple, you both mentioned that everybody's opinions, you listen to them. There's a lot of opinions in this room. Do you listen to uh, any of the stuff that's being said? Not much. <laughs> um, uh, Smythe does a good job giving, you know, Give me a pulse of what's going on out there. I'm not blind to it. Um, do read some of the stuff. Uh, a lot of good writers in this room. Um, but yeah, we have a pulse. What's going on? Second question. The NFL keeps making the draft bigger and bigger every year, and it's even bigger this year in, in Las Vegas. What are the logistics as far as you mentioned you'll be in a room locked in, but are there boots on the ground there, especially not having anything with that first day? What do you do as far as splitting people up? We don't, you know, prior to COVID, we sent a representative, all the teams, to wherever the draft was, and they were kind of on the – it was kind of outdated, I thought, um, and just to have a guy there to answer a phone and be on the phone 24 – you know, all the time with you. We don't send anyone anymore. The league reps will answer the phone, and uh, we're in our draft room. It's a big room. It's, uh, we have all, everything we need there, um, we're, we're, but we're constant communication with the league, and so that's just how – uh, it works logistically. George, with Russ and kind of having this title window, how do you balance picking a guy who's ready to play right away versus a guy that may have more upside but is <coughs> a little bit longer, maybe he's not ready to play right away? Yeah, I, I don't look at it as a window. I mean, Russ is a young 33. He wants to play till he's 40. Uh, we want to take the best player, and now if he's – not quite ready week one, that's fine. We want a guy to be here long term and be the best player. So we're not going to just take a player because he's ready week one. We want, the, we want a player who's going to be here four or five years. And, you know, Russell will probably outlast them all. George, you mentioned earlier, uh, how's your collaboration been like with Nathaniel through the draft process? And as a GM, how do you weigh, say, a guy super talented versus he fits, another guy may fit better? In the yeah, our communication's been great. I mean, we talk every day about everything, football, life. Uh, um, as you know, Nathaniel's got a lot of, I mean, he's a lot more well-rounded than I am, um, but he's got an unbelievable football mind. 
Uh, they're very, very specific what type of player they want. Uh, we don't want to bring a player that doesn't fit. You know, it's not fair to the player. It's not fair to this. It just typically doesn't work. So we want to bring players in who not only fit the scheme, but fit the culture and fit what we're trying to build. And, and, and so that's what we're going to do. Final two, Nick, and then Roman. Darren is a former San Diego State player. Have you been banging the table for a certain punter in this draft? And then my second question, uh, <laughs> um, return, the return spot for you guys, is that something you, can, you think you can solve in this draft? Yeah, I bang the table for every San Diego State player, and it's a running joke in the draft meetings. Every time one comes up, I'm just, run them up, run them up. You got my vote. And we're doing the comparisons. I'm always a San Diego State guy. But uh, in regards to the returner, we evaluate every position with you know critique and detail. We'd love to add a dynamic returner, where that guy is, where he might fall to us you know, to be, to, be, to be determined. But yeah, we'll evaluate all those returners. We'd love to add one. And then not only returners, we're looking for guys that can play special teams. Mm -hmm. you know, we, as you all know, we weren't very good last year. Uh, that falls on us. On the personnel side, we need better special teamers. Uh, we need guys that can not only can play defense or offense. If they're not starting, they need to play special teams. And so we'll, we look for those traits in, in primarily on the third day, but you know, really throughout the draft. So that'll be a big emphasis. Uh, moving forward. George, as someone who loves the draft like you do, you guys have said you've done deep dives on you know the quarterbacks, everyone, knowing that you have the 64th pick, how do you balance that desire to, I know you said it's hard to stand that, so not jump the gun, not go for a guy just because, my gosh, we're waiting to 64. Yeah, no, it's tough. I mean, to wait that long, and there's going to be players falling, and I, and I know, I know I'm going to get jumpy, and the room will get jumpy. And uh, so, no, it's a really good point. Um, but then when I, did, when I walk over here to this presser and I see our quarterback throwing all those receivers, I feel pretty good about it. And I know I'm going to feel good week one because um, we have a franchise quarterback who brings it every day.